I think we as a test community have a lot to contribute to the development because we understand operations, we understand technology, uh, we understand the challenges of integration and the challenges of actually going from a low tech readiness level to one that is operationally relevant. Well, it's interesting because the concept of warfare for the United States is evolving. And in the past, it's typically been uh, very tactical in nature, uh, a few airplanes versus a few airplanes. And we've, we've really kind of outgrown that concept based on uh, the information age. And so we're seeing a lot more now of the uh, integration of warfighting concepts across domains, airspace, cyber, sea, and land. Uh, and, then, uh, and then also as we do developmental work, uh, for these new systems, we're seeing an, an integration of test efforts. The test that begins at the contractor facility and, and then ends up uh, becoming uh, primarily our missionary in the developmental test community, but also integrating operational test and making it less of a, of a serial approach and more integrated all along the way. And that's been uh, tremendously powerful. Well, you've hit on three areas that, that really are going to be key to the way we execute joint all domain operations in the future. And, and very complex and, and critical technologies. But as you know, we are testing the future hypersonic systems now. It's an integrated effort across uh, all of our, uh, of our wings and, and all the expertise. And, uh, and we stood up the cyberspace test group right here at Eglin about two and a half years ago. And that's paying huge dividends for things like uh, ABMS and uh, uh, joint all domain command and control development. Uh, some of the work that we're going to see in the, in the years ahead. Uh, but I really think it's what, what is key is the proliferation of information and how that information will be drawn in from a lot of sources, uh, concentrated at nose, and then disseminated to everybody who needs to see it and use it on the battlefield. And that's something that's key that, uh, that, that, that the team here at Eglin and all across the test center is really working toward. And that is the leveraging of, of the digital age and this information to be able to uh, really vault us ahead in terms of capability of, of our adversaries. Yeah, well, we are very pleased with the way the Space Force is going. They, they recognize that in going from a benign to a, a contested domain that they need to evolve their acquisition processes. Uh, and they effectively need to, uh, almost from, from scratch, stand up a government test organization to help take what has traditionally been uh, maybe a, a commercial uh, analog and turn it into a warfighting system. And that's not easy to do and you need a, a good synergy between the operators and the acquirers to make that happen. Uh, and what we have been doing is, is helping the Space Force through the lessons we've learned in the Air Force to structure that acquisition enterprise to make it more effective to do things like integrating uh, developmental and operational tests, which they have done. They have built that into their construct uh, which is great. It's something the Air Force hasn't done yet, and I would highly recommend we do soon. Uh, we, we are there effectively in terms of how we integrate and collaborate, but there's a structural integration piece which is important that the Space Force now has, and I'm proud we've been able to influence that. We've also helped them grow their uh, fledgling test force that is going to be focused on development of space capabilities. We stood up the, the, the inaugural Space Test Fundamentals course at the Air Force Test Pilot School, uh, back in January and graduated the first class in April and the second class is there now. So about 15 at a time we are building the Space Force's test force and that's going to pay dividends for America for decades. Well, I think one of the best moves that we made in, in Air Force Material Command was the five center reorganization that actually took the three centers at Edwards, Arnold and Eglin and integrated them into one, the test center. Uh, and, and we see that pay off now because each of the sites, uh, and we do have 34 geographic locations, including the three uh, big wings, each of the sites are now looking outside of their own boundaries to try to solve problems. A great example is, is hypersonic weapons development. We've got uh, a lot of, uh, of, of capability at Arnold to uh, do some of the very early risk reduction, for example, materials, materials science materials that we use on hypersonic weapons that are going to be exposed to extreme heat and pressure. We can prove those at Arnold in, in the laboratories there uh, prior to actually putting them on a, on a weapon, on a developmental weapon. We've got the, the weapons expertise here at Eglin, a lot of folks working on, on that, and, and the program office here, and, and, and uh, the research lab here as well, and we're actually doing the testing out at Edwards. 
uh, with the, the, the aircraft and the people that are used to doing that. Uh, they, they did some hypersonic work about a decade ago that, uh, that ended up being a building block for where we are today. And they've got the wide uh, sea test range out there as well. And, and now together we're all working to build a future range that will enable us to, to test high speed long range weapons like the, the uh, hypersonic weapons we're looking at now. As you know, the test community typically needs to stay about three to five years out in front of the latest and greatest technology because when the technology is ready to test, we need to be ready to test it. Uh, I've been very proud of the way the test community has adapted to a lot of the evolving technologies, especially over the last five to seven years uh, when we've seen so many new uh, uh, capabilities on the, on the drawing board. Uh, and I think the creation of, of things like the, uh, the multi-domain test force to address a wide range of, of developmental needs has been, uh, has been really the crowning achievement for, for my tenure, if not for the last uh, uh, decade or so in what we've done in test. And now we've got an organization that can reach across all the talent and expertise in the test center and across our mission partners and integrate that to do very exquisite testing for, say, S&T, uh, science and technology experiments, or large force test events that are representative of, of an operational environment in the battlefield.